Hello, today we are going to be working with the gas laws. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at Boyle's law. Boyle's law tells us that as if we have a piston system, such as this syringe right here, and I have a sample of gas in it, if that gas is prevented from changing the number of moles in the chamber and prevented from changing temperature, that as I decrease the volume of the gas, I'm going to increase the pressure that that gas is exerting on the, on the piston system itself. So uh, to do this, we're going to need three, really three pieces of equipment. One, we're going to need a piston system. So we're going to use this 60 ml syringe. Uh, in your textbook or in your lab book, it may say something about a 20 ml syringe, so we're going to go a little extra today and we're going to do a 10 mil or a 60 mil syringe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a little bit about how to read a syringe. You'll notice that in the syringe itself, it has a peak. That's to account for the meniscus of the liquid, but also for this funneling portion of the syringe at the top where the needle would normally go. Okay. So to, we need to account for that in all of our measurements. So the way we're gonna measure it is that you see there are two rubber stops here. We're gonna measure from the top of the, of the top rubber stop. So from right there where my fingernail is, that's where we're gonna take our readings from. Now, please remember, it, you must be consistent about this. Any loss of consistency is going to throw your readings off in some of those uh, further out uh, significant figures. So the other thing we need to take in mind is how are we going to read this syringe? Remember, whenever we're reading anything that has a gradient on it, we need to account for the uh, smallest increment and what the uh, estimated digit are going to be. So as you can see here, uh, the 30 to 20 to 10, between each one, there are 10 marks. So each line is going to represent one milliliter. That means that for all of my measurements, all of my readings, I need to estimate one more digit past that. So if I put the syringe right here and I take a close up of it, let's see here. That is falling right on the long line between 10 and 20. So that means that that is 15.0, okay? Because I've got to have three significant figures here. 15.0 milliliters of gas in this syringe. Uh, don't forget that when we go up here, this is not uh, 7.00, this is 7.0. That zero before the seven is part of the measurement. So we're only gonna get two significant figures in this portion of the syringe, while we're gonna get three significant figures in all of these other portions of the syringe, okay? So I have a piston system. I can put, we could be fancy and we could load this with nitrogen or helium or argon or pure oxygen or any other gas that we want to, but why? Remember, one of the principles of the uh, gas laws says that it doesn't really matter what gas we have in there, as long as we know how many moles of gases are present, they're not interacting with each other, so their identity is irrelevant, okay? As long as we know pressure, temperature, volume, and moles, it doesn't matter what gases are there. So we're going to use a mixture of just atmospheric air, okay, which is about 70% nitrogen, uh, a whole bunch of oxygen, and then carbon dioxide, some sulfate, some sulfides, a bunch of stuff that you really shouldn't be breathing but are anyway. So uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to dial this syringe down to 10.0 milliliters of gas, okay? So next, I'm going to need a way to actually measure that pressure, okay? So we're going to use a pressure sensor, okay? Uh, this, uh, we're lucky, we could use those old school pneumatic ones that um, 
attached to another piston that's outside and some liquid and blah, blah, blah. The things that you're going to see in like welding or even whenever you're working in respiratory therapy, that's how those are going to use those, those valves that go on top of the big tanks. Uh, we're lucky in that we have ones that just hook correct directly into our computers. So this little thing right here, it's going to measure how much force is being applied to a plate on the inside. That's going to change some electrical stuff here. And that's going to go to our computer and that's going to give us a readout. So we also need a computer that will display this. Now we're in our illustrious computer lab here at SAC. So, uh, and screens don't really translate very well. I can't really videotape a screen very well to you. So what, I, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to connect this. I'm going to show you how to make adjustments to the syringe, and then we're going to give you a set of data to work with, okay? So uh, this type of syringe is called, uh, it's a proprietary thing, it's called a lure lock. And if you look on the inside or on the side here, you're going to see some stuff that looks like threads through a screw, okay? Uh, this is what diabetic insulin syringes look like. This is what most hypodermic syringes look like. Uh, that allows you to switch out the needle at will. You can just screw on a new needle and reuse the syringe if you need to. Don't, that's not aseptic. But that is a thing that sometimes we'll see with, um, well, in a lot of cases that we don't need to talk about, okay? Uh, the way I'm gonna attach this is that this end has the sensor on it itself and it just has a post where I can screw that lure lock on as though it were a needle. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna make it as tight as possible without feeling it click through like it's broken one of the threads, okay? So this is essentially a screw and you need to treat those threads just like it were a screw. Just like you can't strip a screw, you need to be careful to not strip your syringe or things are gonna come squirting out the sides of it, okay? So right now I have 10 milliliters of gas attached to my pressure sens uh, uh, sensor attached to my computer, and it's reading out a pressure in atmospheres. It says that for 10 milliliters, 10.0 milliliters of atmospheric air, I have 0 0.9908 atmospheres of pressure. Okay, that's it. Now, I can compress, see, I'm changing the volume, and now I've compressed this, and the pressure's gone up to 1.8435 atmospheres. Or I can decompress the gas as well, and now it's at 0.2924 atmospheres, okay? So we see that Boyle's Law is working in theory, but let's make sure with the math. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to obtain a whole bunch of data for you. We're going to put that in a table, and then we're going to come back and talk about how you're going to use that data to prove uh, not only that the ideal gas law is true, but how Boyle's Law works and show that through a graphical representation of Boyle's Law.